it may seem really early in the year because it's only April but I'm already thinking about my earning goals for 2025. So I try to make predictions at the beginning of each year as to what I think I might earn, what I think my expenses are going to be for the year. Lots of things don't change that much. Um, even things like, uh, you know, YouTube income, which is um, quite unpredictable generally, will fall within a ballpark figure. So you can make your chart based on what you think you will get for the year and just adjust as the year goes on. And you might find that some of those incomes are quite incremental. There are a couple of things that I've put on my income prediction for this year, which are a bit iffy at the moment. So I've included the one for the medical trial. I've already put that money in, hoping that I will get that medical trial, but I may not. By the time this video comes out, I may have found out that I failed the screenings and then I just have to wait for another uh, medical trial to come up that I can apply for which will probably pay less, it may pay more, who knows. But the ballpark figures are quite healthy for me and it means that I know my income this year will be better than next year. However, some of the, well, one of the income streams I have this year will be, I expect to be gone by the end of August and that is universal credit. Now, it's not... You can't really call it an income because you're not earning it, you're not doing anything for it. Um, but I've explained before about how I am on the transitional year from working tax credits to self-employment. And within that, there are certain leeways they give you because they treat you as a startup business. No matter how old your business is because you're transitioning from working tax credits to universal credit, provided you can prove to them that you are viably self-employed like there's a chance that your business will be able to keep you um, in my case it's my business is very small and has dropped income in the last few years but I found loads of other side hustles which are pulling that up so when I do my self-assessment my self-assessment looks better every year because it all goes into the same pot so they classed me as uh, gainfully self-employed is what they call it and that means that there's a chance that this is going to make me enough money to live on. So they're happy to keep me for the year, uh, push me in the right direction, kind of. You know, it's someone to answer to in terms of proving income and things like that. But I would imagine that will end in August. Now, I've made predictions based on the average amounts of money that they give me each month based on what are fair averages in terms of my income. And I'm fine for this year. Once that money ends in August, I don't need to replace that for the rest of the year because I've already, I can already see the overview of my entire income. I can see that I will make enough money to live on with a bit extra as well. So I'm investing in my pension, in my ISA, in small amounts and I still have enough money left over to make sure that I'm protected in case of emergencies and things like that. I'm not panicking about money this year. Next year, of course, will be different. That'll be a whole new clean slate. And I need to work now on my current income streams to improve those to fill the gap. Now, It, a lot of it depends on what my expenses will be next year, how things might change, my expenses might go down next year, things might not be as bad, car insurance may come down a bit, it happens. Um, you know, I might get really, be able to save some money on my food bills, there might be other things I can save on. So I don't know exactly how much money I need to earn, but again, I can use those ballpark figures. And even without that universal credit money, I could just take that out of the equation and I would be okay provided I stay on top of my other income streams so keep working on the surveys keep working on the YouTube all those sorts of things and who knows YouTube income may drop it may go up it's a lot of it is an unknown but that's so that is my main goal for the rest of this year is to improve on the existing side hustles that I have so that next year I know that it doesn't matter 
about the universal credit money, I don't need it. After that, what I really want to be able to do is also be able to replace the cleaning income because I don't want to do that forever. But it's quite a lot of money. So at the moment I'm earning um, roughly four and a half thousand a year from the cleaning and finding another side hustle that replaces that I think is going to be um, a bit of a push. That would, I think, require me going back into PAY work. I'm not doing a huge number of hours. Um, it's only eight and a half hours a week at the cleaning. That's all I want to do. I don't really want any more from that. If I needed to top up the money, I could try and get some more jobs. There don't seem to be many jobs around at the moment through the app. When new jobs come up, they put them into the app and you can apply for them. I haven't seen very many. The ones that have come up have tended to come up when I've not been available. So I haven't been able to accept them. And I'm very mindful that I don't want to be driving miles and miles and miles for, you know, £11.75 an hour. It's just not worth it. So I'm, I keep quite a close perimeter around where I live as to what jobs I will go to. The three that I have are very close. It's very easy for me. Minimal outlay. That's great. But I don't really want to expand on that unless something really drastic happens and I really need to up my income. So that's further down the line. But for now, I need to focus on replacing that um, universal credit income next year. Now, I've made predictions based on the averages that I get from them each month, which is based on my averages in terms of income. And I think I need to find, if I wanted to replace UC next year, I would have to find roughly three and a half thousand pounds. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll keep working on things. Might find a new side hustle. Um, the medical evaluations work may be the only alteration that I need because that, like the one I've applied for at the moment, would replace the whole of my UC money coming in for the entire year uh, in, in an, a, an eight day study. So if I can get one of those, but there's no guarantee I will get them. There's no predictability about it. Um, but theoretically one study a year will pay for the whole of UC for the whole year. So that might all, that might just be all I need to do is get two studies a year rather than one and that will replace that. But that's a little bit of a gamble. I only started doing the medical work last year I got a study that paid me just over two and a half thousand pounds. The one I've applied for now, um, if I get it, will pay just over three and a half thousand pounds. And you have to wait three months after a completed study before you can apply again for any more studies. But potentially you could get two or three studies in a year if the dates all fell at the right time. And of course it depends what the studies are as well. So there are ifs and buts, but I already have my first goal in mind for next year, and that is to replace, as far as is possible, the money that was coming in from Universal Credit. So that's my little challenge. This is a short post today. That's just a little, a little thought for today on already pre-planning for next year. It's good to have things to aim for. And particularly when you are budgeting and watching your money and planning ahead, it's good to have motivation and inspiration and reasons for carrying on. Because when you work for yourself, when you work from home, it can get be really hard to stay motivated because you're just working for yourself. You don't have a boss to answer to. You, you know, in terms of profit margins, there's less to answer to. If you work from home and you don't have any of those expenses that come with running a business, your profit margins may need to be very small and you just kind of sit back and go, oh, it'll be fine. It's quite difficult when you don't have um, like a mentor or someone to answer to. So that's why I've quite enjoyed having the universal credit since uh, when it started last September. Because it means every month I have to report 
income so I can see what's going on. Every three months I have to go in and see the work coach and talk about how well I'm doing, what I'm doing, um, and that at least gives me someone to answer to. It's not much because they can't force me to take work that I don't want to take because they need to get me off their numbers. And I don't feel very motivated to do that because I know that my claim will be ending in August and that will be the end of it and I'll be off their figures anyway. I don't think my work coach knows that because I don't think she sees all the information. She sees my income and whatever on a monthly basis. I don't think she knows about the circumstances which mean that once I go onto regular universal credit, I will not be eligible. And that's just the way the system works. That's the joy of the startup. If you're self-employed and you're on the transitional um, migration from working tax credit to universal credit, um, they do make allowances for that because it's a, it's you're being forced to move from one benefit to another. So they give you that year to sort you out, sort yourself out. Um, and then if you are still eligible for universal credit, you'll be put onto the regular system. If you're not, you're off. So it gives you that breathing space of a year to make improvements, make changes, look at new income, look at increasing your self-employed income or adding to it from other side hustles, maybe a part-time PAYE job to top it up. It, it all depends on how you want to make your money. Anyway, so that's my thought for the day. Um, I'll see how I go with all that. The, the pressure's not quite there yet because I don't need to replace that income until next year. But it's really important to think ahead. Um, and I can already see the figures. I'll show you my, my, um, my chart here, which gives you an idea of the drop that comes with um, not having that money next year. Even though it stops, it will stop at the end of August, um, it's already covered itself for this year so I don't need to replace the rest of this year once it stops it's what's happening next year that makes the difference so yeah on these figures you can see um, the different colors on income and outgoing and you can see the years um, for this year and next year and you can see the big differences in the income and how that will change um, based primarily on the universal credit but also I've I've dumbed down some of the figures for next year because who knows what's going to happen this year so that's my little update uh, I hope you found that interesting um, and if you're doing a similar thing let me know how you're doing that how you're thinking about replacing incomes upping incomes looking at new income streams always interested to hear what's going on out there in the world so um, just let me know comment like subscribe all the other things that everybody does every time at the end of their videos and um, thank you very much for your support it's good to have you here it's really interesting to hear how people are navigating this more expensive world and the cost of living crisis and the economic situation and how things are up and down. It's all over the place, Ugh, but we just carry on. Speak to you soon.